Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Global Education. We are hosting another webinar for you. We've got an exciting one today that we're going to introduce on campus Boston. They're one of our valuable partners here who work with on campus. Um, it's a pathway providing program as well, and they're going to explain a little bit more about what they do, how it works, and um, some insights into some career information for you as well. Today, we're going to be presenting Brian O'Malley, who's the head of center at On Campus Boston. And we've also got Jennifer Bridges, who some of you would have spoken to, um, or even through one of our counseling sessions as well. She's the regional manager for East and Southern Africa. And um, I do hope you do appreciate the, this webinar. Please do put any questions that you have in the Q&A section. And um, we've got about 20 people signed up onto this webinar. We did have a couple of people signing out and a couple of low shedding issues in Southern Africa. But don't worry, we will be resharing all this content again with you. And um, if you do want to share it with your school, please do drop us an email or a message. I will be sharing all our contact details, as well as Jennifer's and Brian's as well. So please feel free to reach out to any of us. Um, I'll hand over to you, Brian and Jennifer. Thanks so much, George. It's really a pleasure to have this opportunity to speak to your counselors and to your students out there. Uh, really excited to be recruiting students from the African continent. Uh, look forward to welcome them back to uh, studying face to face, is which what which is exactly what we're doing at Curry College uh, in Boston at On Campus Boston. Um, we have been in Boston for about ten years. Most of our students know us as the place where you can come to, do a year, and go anywhere in the U.S. So it's a lot of flexibility. Um, it's a lot different than the typical pathway program. The other advantage of our program is students do not waste any time. It's not like a pathway program where students come and they learn, but they don't earn any college credits. From day one, students are earning college credits. So it's the exact same experience for a direct entry student as it is for an international year one student on campus Boston. Where we add value is in all the support. And I'm gonna talk about the support and I'll, I'll touch on the three types of students that are very common for our program. Uh, one of the most common students, and we mentioned it uh, before, uh, before we started recording here was that students who have really high expectations, maybe they struggled in their junior or senior year in high school, but this, their parents have high expectations of where they want them to study in the US. And they're looking for another opportunity uh, outside of direct entry. And that's where On Campus Boston comes in. We have lower entrance requirements. We can get a student back on track, give them the study skills they need, and really give them the opportunity to transfer some of these great schools here in the US. Uh, we've been busy during the pandemic. Uh, student numbers of students actually coming face to face, of course, have been low, uh, but we've been working. Uh, nevertheless, we've been signing up some tremendous, guaranteed, nationally ranked partners. What, what that means is if a student comes to on-campus Boston, completes the program within certain parameters, they have guaranteed entrance to seven of these great nationally ranked universities. And I'm going to talk about them as well. So without further ado, I'm going to share my screen and go into my presentation and touch on each of those topics. And at the end, I'll be open to any questions you may have. And if you can see my screen now, this is Boston. We've just started the summer. It looks just like this. It's a beautiful city, great destination for international students because it's a lot smaller than a city like Los Angeles or New York but it's really compact. It's an easy walking city and it's full of students. We have over 50 universities right here in the Boston area. And it's a great place for students to come, socialize, network, and really understand what it means to study here in the US. I wanna talk a little bit about what is on campus Boston. I talked about a little bit of pathways. I talked about international year one programs. We're an international year one program that's unique in the fact that students can study with us at Curry College for one year and go anywhere after that. Uh, anywhere could include our seven guaranteed progression partners, but also any of the 4,000 degree granting university and college programs here in the US. It's a really big number, uh, but we've been doing this for about 10 years and we know exactly how to advise students. Our program includes cultural and welfare support and academic support, that's where our program adds value for no extra cost, the same cost as, as a direct entry student pays at Curry College, you get all of the support that goes along with that program. And of course, we help you get to your dream schools. 
Um, and we also offer guaranteed regression partners for years two through four. And I'm gonna talk about those as well. Why would a student come to our program? There's a number of reasons. I talked about the first one with students who may have struggled in their uh, senior year or in the high school experience, and they not eligible to direct entry into the US college that they of their choice. Uh, they can come to on-campus Boston and uh, have a good solid year and then transfer as a second year student to that school. We have very flexible entry requirements. So some of the best schools in the US have really high entrance requirements. They look for TOEFLs of, a, of, a, of 100 or more. They look for GPAs of 3.5 or higher. That's not the case with on-campus Boston. We'll look for a, a very average GPA. We look for you know just proficiency in English and, and we can bring you into the program. We're very flexible. We have experience through our one-to-one -one, uh, support and tutoring to really bring students a long way from the time they arrive at our, at our program to the time they leave. Students have mature a lot and they, they learn a lot of the skills they're gonna to need to be successful. We can also offer uh, guaranteed progressions, as I mentioned, but also co-branded offer letters. So uh, if a parent gets a, a letter from on-campus Boston, they'll say, the offer letter will say, you've been conditionally accepted to, uh, you've been accepted to on-campus Boston and conditionally accepted to one of our partners. And maybe I can show you an example of that as well. How does the program work? As I mentioned, students do one year, it's actually one academic year, two semesters at on-campus Boston, they can either progress to one of our seven nationally ranked uh, partner programs or beyond that, they can go to any of the 4,000 schools that are here in the US. Transfer. Uh, a lot of parents, uh, they, they, they struggle with the idea of why would, a, why would my students start at one university and transfer to another? Uh, it's very common here in the US and there's a whole myriad of reasons why, stu why students do it. The number one reason, of course, is academic achievement. A student is doing really well in their current university. They look for opportunities to higher rank universities. Um, at Al Campus Boston, it's the same, it's the same situation. We have we bring students into our program at Curry College, but of course, the majority of the students are looking to, to progress to much higher ranked schools. We have a four-step advising process from the very beginning. We're going to reach out to the student even before they arrive and find out what's their goal, what do they want to study if there's a university that they have in mind that they want to study. And then we'll do the research and find out what it takes to transfer into that program. Uh, while they're in the program, we're going to help them understand how to use the Common App. And the Common App is a great tool for international students where students can do, fill out one application and they can apply up to 2,500 schools here in the US. And they only have to write a single transfer essay. So that's really helpful because essays are, uh, are a lot of work and they're always different topics depending on what school you apply to. Using the Common App helps you get around that and write a single essay, do a really good job on it and, and send it to multiple schools. Our partners are invited to recruit our students before anyone else. So we have our partners come in either uh, remotely through uh, Zoom or they'll come and visit us, talk to our students and recruit them right out of the program. They're very anxious and they, they're very, uh, yeah, they're very excited about study about recruiting our program. Sorry, they're excited about recruiting our students into their programs. And then the last step, of course, is when students get all of their acceptance letters, we help them walk through what's the best fit for them, what's the best scholarship, highest ranking, location, etc. So there's a little bit of work to the process, but we've been doing it for a long time, and we have a lot of a great success, successful track record to go along with that. Progression partners, I talked about guaranteed progression partners. I'm gonna to touch on each of those right now. The first one I wanna talk about is our top 100 partner, uh, Elon University. It's ranked number 88. Uh, what does that mean? As I mentioned, there are 4,000 different programs here in the US that students could actually attend for undergrad. To be in the top 100 would put you above the top 1%. You're actually in the 0.02%, so really the elite schools. Uh, so that's why we're really excited to be working with Elon University. I actually have, a, I'll see if I can post a link, I have a link to a, like a 10 minute talk I have with a really in-depth discussion of, of why the, the university is such a great partner. Uh, just to briefly touch on uh, its strong points, it's in a beautiful, beautiful uh, state of North Carolina, nice urban area. It has students from all over the world because they have a great, um, they have a great study abroad program. They have a fantastic internship program where students can study 
uh, a semester in either Los Angeles or New York if they choose. And of course, the ranking is great. They have a great business program. They're starting a STEM program there. Um, and it's just a really friendly, safe environment for students to, to, uh, to complete their undergraduate degree. So very happy to work with Elon. In order for one of our students to get the guaranteed progression into Elon, they only need a 3.0 GPA, which is about a B average. And since we've been at, at Curry College, about 70% of our students are earning a B or, uh, average or higher. So it's very accessible. Illinois Tech, uh, some of you may know, we actually have a center at Illinois Tech. Uh, for students who don't qualify for, the, for our international year one program at Illinois Tech for, as, as direct entry, students can come to on-campus Boston, take our program and, and be eligible to transfer into any of their non-STEM majors. And we just had a student from South, uh, South Korea who did that. He was accepted to Arizona State, he was accepted to University of Cincinnati, and he was accepted to Illinois Tech. He decided to go to Illinois Tech. He earned the uh, scholarship of up to of 22,000 that will uh, repeat years three and four. So really excited to have another route into Illinois Tech. It's a great uh, STEM school. University of Cincinnati, another great university, over 90 different majors. Great thing about University of Cincinnati, it's a, the cost of living is a lot lower there. So much less than would be live on the East Coast or the West Coast. So it's accessible to a lot more students. Um, they have just about any major you could think of with 90 majors. There's a lot of opportunity there. And they're number three for internships. And what that means is there's a lot of schools who come, I mean, a lot of businesses will come to that school and look for students to do co-ops, to do internships, give them the work experience that's really valuable for them uh, when they either finish the program or if they go on to graduate school. Scholarships are up to $15,000 renewable over three years as well. GPA of 3.0 to guarantee uh, to get the scholarship, to get entry, only need a GPA of 2.5, which is about a C plus GPA. So uh, very accessible to our students. UMass Lowell, it's a great, uh, another great school. It's the flagship university of Massachusetts. Uh, students have the opportunity to stay in the Boston area. It's a short, a short ride from the center of Boston to the U University of uh, uh, UMass Lowell. And they have great majors as well. They have a great uh, STEM program there. They have great engineering. They have uh, business. They have a fantastic music program. We've already sent a number of students there and they're very happy. Uh, great to have them on board as a partner. Scholarships up to $20,000 available. University of Albany, similar in cost to Cincinnati, very low cost of living. They're in the capital of New York uh, in Albany. Um, many majors, over 65 majors there. Uh, they're part of the SUNY system, which is a state school system of New York, where if a student starts it at Albany, they can go to one of the other seven or eight uh, sister schools that, that uh, are in the SUNY system, even in the city if they want it. So there's a lot of flexibility, a lot of room to, to, to create your own major at Albany, and we're very happy to have them as a partner. Florida Tech, our, this, this is our particular partner that's not in the top 200. However, it's a very interesting partner and, and we're excited to have them. The fact that they're right in Florida, the weather is fantastic. They're right in the center of Florida and Melbourne. They're in uh, an area called the Space Coast. So they're very close to where NASA is uh, launching uh, spacecraft all the time. They're, they're world renowned for their, air, for their aeronautics program. Uh, aerospace engineering, I'm sorry, for aerospace air engineering and for their aviation program. So those are two really popular majors they have there. Uh, the, the school has its own fleet of airplanes and its own airport. So it's a great place to learn. If you're interested in learning to fly, it's a great place to go. But they have a full slate of STEM majors as well. Scholarships up to $15,000 uh, available from them as well. And last partner, I know I talked about quite a few schools, CCA, California College of the Arts. This is a, a kind of a, a, a boutique school that has fantastic art majors. Now, being an art major is very different from a lot of different majors. So you need to have our portfolio. The good news is that CCA is willing to accept portfolio work done in the on-campus program at the Curry Studio Art Programs as part of the portfolio. So it really makes the uh, possibility of pursuing an art degree a lot more available to students. And we're very excited to be working with California College of the Arts. They're in San Francisco. 
they're they're growing they're adding new buildings and it's it's really a mecca for artists all over the world to to go to san francisco and and, and practice and learn art so those are the seven uh guaranteed progression partners i had mentioned very excited to have them on board but that's not the end of the story as i mentioned uh students can come to on campus boston and go anywhere one of our most famous or one of our most celebrated uh transfers was a student who went to Cornell University, was ranked number 11 at the time. He started in our program. He was an average student from Indonesia. Uh, his family was in the hotel business. He was thinking of going into the same business. Um, when he was with us in our program, our counselors were able to get him uh, interviews and spend a day with managers of hotels in the Boston area. He came back very excited, did really well on the program, got a perfect GPA and he transferred to the University of San Francisco, which is a top 100 school here and has a great hospitality program. And then in the second year, he used what he learned from our program and transferred again into Cornell. So really excited for him and it really shows the possibilities for a student who comes to a, a small school like Curry College, takes advantage of our program, it, the opportunities are endless and to end up in an Ivy League is really a fantastic uh, outcome. A couple of students I just want to highlight uh, recently from, from the African continent. We have Audrey from Cameroon. Uh, she just finished a program, uh, I think it was three semesters ago. Uh, she ended up progressing to the University of Massachusetts Lowell. She got the $20,000 a year scholarship. Great testimonial from her. She said, I really enjoyed my journey at Curry College, especially looking at the academic performances. The on-campus Boston team was supportive more than expected. And I want to say thanks, and it's true support 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 i'm going to talk about a lot that's what we do from the beginning to the end we're there we're there for the students we're there to hold their hand when necessary and give them encouragement and and really get them on the track to be successful and you can see she was also accepted to suffolk university to cincinnati uh great student and then another student here chris uh he finished the program i think four semesters ago he is currently attending wentworth institute of technology ranked number 38 regionally you can see his GPA was about was less than 3.5, but he was in a very uh, competitive major, mechanical engineering. He came and he took all the, he, now he didn't take mechanical engineering classes in our program. In our program, he took what's called the general eds and electives, which are mandatory for any major a student will take. And that's kind of what we specialize at On Campus Boston. You're gonna take the required English class. You're gonna take a required math class. In the case of Chris, he took uh, physics and he took uh, calculus in our program. But as far as the actual engineering classes, he would take those with Wentworth University in year two, three, and four. Um, the big news about this, he was also accepted to Northeastern University, which is ranked number 43. Um, he ended up going to Wentworth just because they gave him the $17,000 scholarship. It was hard for him to say no to that. Uh, he has a great testimonial. It says, my experience at On Campus Boston and Curry College was wonderful. I didn't really know if I could live alone when I came. Uh, he was very young at the time. I think he was just turned just turned 17. He says, I was really shy and somewhat overwhelmed by being in a university, but the on-campus Boston staff changed that. They were open and helpful and supportive. And now I'm more open and I can go to any university in the world and adapt. I would like to say a big thanks to the on-campus staff. That's a very typical story. You know, students come shy. Um, they, it, it's a brand new experience for them. They travel five, six, seven, ten thousand miles from their home country. It's 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 a you know it's it's definitely a, a shocking experience at first. It's great to have friendly faces and people to walk you through that process and make sure you have a great first year. Other typical uh, typical outcomes for our students: uh, Rutgers, uh, Indiana, Bloomington, uh, Kentucky, New York University, Brandeis. These are all schools that we've had great success in the past of transferring students to. So, like I said, you can come to on campus Boston. You can go anywhere. I want to talk a minute just about our, our host university, uh, Curry College. It's located just outside of Boston. It's about eight miles from the center of Boston. Beautiful campus, super safe. I've had parents come to uh, along with their students to orientation and tell me, Brian, I love it here. I feel like my, my, daughter, my son or daughter is safe here and it's a great environment for them. And it is the truth. You can't find a better place, um, either direct entry or through uh, international first year program to come and feel comfortable and feel like, you know, uh, I'm going to I'm going to be successful in this program, especially in year one. It's a great place to, to start your academic journey. 
as I mentioned, about seven miles from downtown Boston, uh, about 25 minutes by taxi, and about there's a there there is a shuttle that leaves every hour from Carly College to the local train station, and then on the train it's about 15 to 20 minutes into the center of Boston. So very accessible. Boston is very accessible, although we're in the town the next town right over called Milton, Massachusetts, which was voted one of the safest towns in all of the U.S. What's it like on the campus? Lots of open spaces, lots of brick buildings. Um, the dorms, usually there are two students per room. Uh, our students will likely be placed with another on-campus student because they'll be attending a lot of the same classes. However, next door, there is likely to be domestic students, American students, so students have the opportunity to socialize and feel what it's like to be an American student, a, a real authentic experience that they wouldn't get at say like a community college. This is real college. And everything else in the campus is definitely walking distance. It's about five minutes from the dorms to the classrooms, about five minutes from the dorms to the library, um, to the dining hall. So everything is in, in, certainly in walkable distance. Great thing about Curry College is small classrooms. When I first studied here in the US, my own, uh, my own uh, undergraduate experience many, many years ago was at uh, University of Massachusetts Amherst. I had at least three classes in the first year that had over 100 students in it. So it can be intimidating. I think this is a much better option, especially for international students that come and have small classroom sizes where they can talk directly to the professors. It's, it's a gated uh, college, so I, no, nobody's allowed on the campus who doesn't have an ID. And if there's about 40 different organizations and clubs that students can join where they can socialize, they can meet US students, and they can get the kind of the experience that looks really good on their resumes or CVs when they apply to other schools or when they apply for employment after they finish their education. Quickly, a sample of what a typical day looks like or a typical week for one of our students. As I mentioned, our students have taken the same classes as direct entry students. Um, right here, there are five credit bearing classes. There is a, a college composition class. There is a science class, a history class, math class, statistics, and a communications class. And these are some of these electives and general eds that I told that I, I mentioned earlier that are required in any major in the US. So it's in your best interest. It's in our students' best interest to take these classes with us we know how to support you. We know how to, to, to really get you the best grades and make you a better candidate for transfer in year two. And then where we add value are the classes I highlighted in green. That's, those are the classes my staff teaches, including study skills, how, uh, how to do research at the library, how to avoid plagiarism, and then of course the transfer process and the assimilation process. Things like how do I get a cell phone? Uh, where do I go when I'm sick? What's it mean to have insurance? How do I order transcripts? All those questions are answered uh, in our support classes. And, you know, we get a lot of feedback from our students that tell us, you know, even though the experience was great overall, the things they learned in the support classes are the things that helped them the most uh, in their undergraduate career. About 7.5 hours a week of support classes. So that's added value at no extra cost. So that's why I say, as far as direct entry goes, this is probably a better experience in direct entry because of all the support that comes along with it at no extra cost. In addition to myself, I have a student support advisor in contact with students. As soon as we get the uh, confirmation the students are, are coming, we can help them with a kind of a pre-interview for visas if necessary. Um, we're in contact to tell them what to bring, what to pack, uh, meet them when they arrive to the campus, get them moved into their dorms, and then really be with them uh, through attendance issues and study issues, whatever it takes uh, to make them successful while they're in the program. We have our transfer advisor, who I touched on earlier, uh, to help students navigate all the different university options for them in year two. And then of course we have our tutor to help with study skills. And of course, the, the big question of how do I write a college essay? That's a skill that's gonna stay with them through the whole academic career. Admissions, I mentioned flexible admissions. If you're applying to a top 100 school in the US, these deadlines come very early. They're six, seven, nine months in advance of when the classes start. Not the case at On Campus Boston. You can apply as late as the middle of August and attend classes with us at the end of August, as long as you have enough time to, to get a visa. So certainly gives students a second chance to, to attend their dream university without losing any time. 
and then no SAT scores are necessary, no personal statements. We make it as easy and accessible as possible for students. Dates, the big date coming up now would be the, the August start, August 30th. Uh, students would do the semester from August 30th to December. There is about a six week break and then students would finish the, the program in uh, January through May, transfer to their next school and then begin that school the following August. So that's, that's, that's the best scenario for, uh, for, for any student to join our program to join us in the fall. Although we do have a spring intake as well, uh, students can join us this, in January as well. What's the cost? 41,240. So 41,000 is a lot of money. We understand that, especially for students in, uh, you know, especially for first year to come and study in the Boston, come, come and study in Boston, that's a big number. Um, but we're aware of that and CEG is gonna do everything we can, you know, scholarship wise or whatever we can do on the cost to make it accessible to our students. Uh, any questions of that, talk to my, uh, uh, people in the field or talk to Jen. Uh, she can tell um, individual counselors and even students, you know, what's available as far as scholarship. Students are expected to live on the campus in the first semester, uh, sorry, in the first year. Uh, what's, in what's included in the 17,000 for housing and dining is 17 meals a week. So all the students' meals are, are included, plus things like internet access, uh, cable TV, access to all the clubs, the gyms, everything they go, any celebrations they have on campus. So that's all included in the, the housing and dining. Overall, it's a really good price when you put everything together. As I mentioned, scholarships are available. You can talk to Jen about those, see what's available uh, in your region. And the last thing I wanna mention is our mascot, Lola. If you've been to Boston, people are crazy about eating lobsters in Boston. They're really delicious. We decided to make one our, our mascot. Lola's our mascot. Uh, we came up with a name. Um, Lola, because we want students to do four things. We want them to learn, of course, to overcome the challenges that are associated with first year uh, students. But I talked a little bit about those. We want them to laugh, enjoy, make friends, and then achieve. And when I say achieve, I want them to get to their dream school. So that's how we came up with Lola's. And that is my presentation. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna open it up for any questions you may have. Brian, thank you very much for that. That made me want to go back and redo my college experience. Um, I, I think I might share this with everybody. I went to University of Cincinnati. So I did my first year and a half at University of Cincinnati. Um, we had the global financial crisis and then I ended up making my way across to here in Australia where I am right now. But what happened to me was that first year of college, we, when you come from Southern Africa, it's very broad and it acted kind of like a pathway for me. And um, with a lot of the students that we counsel, um, we do see that when you, you're 18 and you're doing sports and your clubs and you've got life ahead of you, you, you've got so many different things on your mind. And that's the one thing why I support these types of programs is it gives you a chance to really get accustomed to that university and that support. Um, I've got one question here for you from a student was, what are some of the the negatives for a student like what are some of the things that you you get asked that um has a student worrying about whether it's the right program for them to do whether they should look at even doing a pathway what are some insights you can give to them yeah, what a typical question that we get from students uh, especially on the i-20 they'll say the, the program of study is liberal arts and that is the case in the first year because you're taking a lot of these general eds students say oh i want to be a doctor i want to be an engineer, how come I'm not taking engineering classes in the first semester or in the first year? And believe me, it's very common in the US for students to just take general eds in the first year. It's really where we uh, focus our attention to make sure students have the best possible GPA in the first year and make them the best possible candidates for transfer. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a method that we've been using for 10 years here in Boston. It's very successful. Students who come out you know, even if they struggled in high school, if they can show they have a 3.5, uh, 3.9, 4.0 GPA in their first year, that's a student that these schools want to recruit. They say, uh, especially in the second year, these great schools, they lose a certain number of students who are direct entry students who are just not prepared for the, the experience. So there's a lot of empty seats. Who do they want to fill those seats? They want students with proven track records, and that's where they find them in our program, students with these great GPAs. They say, that's a student I want. That's a student we're willing to give scholarship to. 
So I tell students, don't worry about what's on the I-20. Don't worry about the curriculum in the first year. We know what we're doing. We're there to advise you. We're going to get you on track to whatever major you want to pursue. We're going to put you in a good position to pursue that major. Brilliant. One of the other questions that we had from one of the counselors was, what's the type of site with well, the class sizes like? Are they um, big classes? Um, if you could go a little yeah, bit into that. Quite, I touched on it briefly when I was uh, there. A lot of the schools have these uh, auditorium style uh, classes, which is fine if they're domestic students. I was in a couple of classes that had 100 students or more when I was a, a freshman many, many years ago. But at Curry College, the largest class you're going to find is probably 20 students. And the average is one professor to 13 students. I find in the on-campus classes, the numbers are even smaller. So there's a great opportunity for students to, to interact directly with the professors. And in our, in our university success class, we encourage students you know, to raise their hand and understand that here in the US, it's not rote learning. There's a lot of Socratic method, a lot of question and answers. And it's fine for a student to raise their hand and ask a question for the, from the, the professor. And it's, you know, depending on where you've studied in the past, that's kind of a foreign concept to a lot of students who are just used to sitting in front of a professor, writing notes and taking tests. And um, I've got another question here from, from Rafia was, um, in terms of the pandemic and sort of the onset for the future, are you seeing a lot more students um, asking for the sciences in terms of, you know, virology and all, you know, that sort of area with the pandemic, or is it more on still on the tech side of things that you're seeing students? Yeah, we've definitely through? seen a lot of interest in students who want to study kind of the pre-med majors, the biology majors, uh, biotech majors. There's definitely been a uh, interest in that. But as far as even moving away from kind of the social sciences, from the psychology, from the business, we see a lot more interest in STEM majors now, why we, which is why we're really excited to be working with uh, Florida Institute of Tech, working with UMass Lowell, great STEM, STEM options at those schools. Great. For me, like um, looking at the value and the cost in that, you know, the type of support, having one to 13 with a professor, and you've got a tutor and you've got all these um, academic support, it really adds that value and that support system to it. Um, Jennifer, I don't know if we can lead you into the conversation here. Uh, I've got a question on scholarships for, for South Africa specifically, um, but maybe we can get into Zimbabwe as well, um, since we've got the two regions. We have the same scholarships across Africa, and students can apply for scholarships of between $10,000 and $25,000 for their year at on-campus Boston. And um, how does that process work? How would they go about doing that? They would need to uh, request it through one of your counselors and submit the, the request to us. So it's as simple as that, nothing too complicated Easy. at all. <laughs> I know people, when they hear that from us, they're always like, wow, that's it, nothing else. <laughs> no, that's just, that's really just the it. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Um, I've got a question here from Pure Joy. Thank you very much, Pure Joy, for, answer, for, for saying this question to you. Um, my question is about age. Are you supposed to be 17 years of age to qualify? I'm 23 and I would love to apply. That is I'm in correct. my 30s and I would love to apply. <laughs> yeah. That is correct. Uh, 17 is the youngest age we can allow students into the dormitories. Uh, they do need, still need a parent, uh, kind of like a parent uh, approval to get into that parent consent form. Uh, at 18, they're, they're fine to join us, but we have had students and we currently have students in the program who are over 20 years old. So there is graduate housing available at Curry College. So if a student that you wouldn't feel comfortable, you know, in the same building with 17 and 18 year olds, there is an option for them to stay in graduate housing with students closer to their own age while still extending our program. So yes, that's, that's certainly a possibility. In terms of an, an older student applying through this, um, let's say they wanted to, to do another degree or they wanted to sort of change career, um, how would that work? Would it, would it be a case of just the normal sort of process as well? It, it's very, uh, depending on what the target school is, uh, some universities do not want students who've already earned an undergraduate degree, but others, other, other universities are welcome it. Um, one thing that they, they that makes it a little more difficult, say if a, a student studied, say, a chemistry major overseas, and now they want to study chemistry here, that can be a little bit difficult. There's usually more success, uh, more likelihood of getting a, a visa if they're looking to study a different uh, discipline. So maybe they want to study business now. That, that, that makes a lot more sense to the visa officers than studying, you know, if they say, oh, you already earned your undergraduate, why would you come back and do the same thing again? 
so that's just a, a kind of a rule of thumb. We could, do, we could do the research if there was a particular school a student wanted to progress to and they already had an undergraduate degree, I could do the research to find out if that school welcomes students who already have a previous undergraduate degree. In terms of the pandemic, Brian, and um, COVID and what's happened, I know we're all tired of listening to the word COVID, um, but I think it's pertinent for students to understand what happened in, in Boston and where it is now and what, what would they expect if they were to arrive and even pre-departure as well. That's a great question. Uh, I don't know if you've seen on the news, but the US is doing really well as far as vaccination rates. The Northeast where Boston is, is uh, located is probably the, the safest place in the whole country. We're at about 80% of, of uh, eligible people have been vaccinated with a single shot, about 70% completely vaccinated. All of the universities here in the Boston area are moving forward. They have uh, are moving forward with face-to-face -face teaching, so and without masks. So it's going to be very, very similar to you know as close to normal as possible here in the U.S. Uh, in the Boston area, it's one of the safest places you can come study in the world right now. I've got a question from me here for you, Brian. What um, what made you get into this this industry, and how did you um? stumble upon it. You know, it's funny, uh, I, I was uh, actually in a kind of industrial supply before I got into this industry, but then I had met my wife just by chance at a, at a, at a party here in the, in the neighborhood. She was an international student. She was studying English at a small language school. Um, I, get to, I got to know the owner and they said, you know, we really need somebody with management experience to be the school kind of manager, uh, business manager. So I took that role for a while. And then from there, I moved on to uh, to on campus Boston at Wheelock College, which was in, in Boston originally. And we, and after it, after 2018, we moved to Curry College. So it's you never know how you, you never know where you're going to end up and what's the right fit for you. And I tell students, you know, they worry so much. Am I picking the right major? And I tell them, listen, all you can do is use the information you have at hand right now. But hopefully, you learn the schools the skills to be adaptable and always be learning and, and looking for new opportunities and. That's really what we stress in our program to students to keep their eyes open, understand what they are good at, and then how they can apply those skills to different type of occup occupations. No, brilliant, Brian. Um, I, like like I said earlier, I, I find this very very valuable. Um, you know, I would this I would the love best job I ever had because every you know I have a whole bunch of stories, and because we have new new students every year, I can keep telling them over and over again. It's 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 old to me, but new to all the students. <laughs> <laughs> so I can tell them the amazing stories of Brian. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and, and seeing these students progress, um, you know, we would love to see some stories of those students once they've been to these careers. Uh, do you have any success stories like that in types of businesses that these students have, have gone on to and go and work through? I'm having a lot of students who end up contacting stack actually have gone on to graduate school and they've had a great, uh, I've been sending out a lot of transfers to students who are applying to some fantastic graduate schools. Um, I know that we had a student from uh, South Korea, great student who finished our program with a 4.0. He went to University of Indiana Bloomington to study business. And when he was there, he said, you know, this really isn't for me. I'd rather do marketing. Um, he kept up his grades and he transferred again in year two, uh, sorry, year two to three. He transferred to University of Berkeley, California, top 20 school studied marketing there, got an internship with Google, and now he works for Google in, in, in Seoul. So, I mean, there's some amazing stories like that out there. And it's, it's again, it's how motivated students are and how open-minded they are about their, their possibilities for them. Absolutely, that perspective is so important. Being, and the ability to open your mind, you know, for me starts at that first year, you know, being adaptable right. to it and being-, and being the good foundation, getting the study skills, getting time management. Once you can hammer that down, and getting self confidence. And our one to one uh, tutoring that we we have once every two weeks with our students. You know, we really focus on how can we make students more confident and see themselves in a different light, not just as a student, but a potential asset to a to a company to a program. No. Um. I've got another question here, Brian. Um, Nico has just sent through a message us. So I'm just going to read it out here. Um, sure. When it comes to um, applying for 
co-ops. Um, a lot of students get very confused in what a co-op is. And um, he wanted us to explain a little bit more about the co-op system um, and where that sort of came from and how it works. Sure, I'd be happy to. There's a couple of ways students can work on a F1, which is a student visa. One is called CPT, which is the most common for a co-op. And a co-op is a, it's kind of a work opportunity in the middle of your studies where you take one semester and you work for a company that's sponsored, that has a relationship with the university. Sometimes it's paid, you know, more often than not, it's, it's paid, sometimes it's unpaid, but at the same time as you're working, you're earning college credits. So it's not like you're wasting and taking a semester off, you're actually getting work experience, plus you're getting your earning credits at the same time. So it's really valuable for students that, uh, who want to go on to grad school or want to go on to get employees afterwards to say, you know, while I was studying at University of Cincinnati, I had this amazing co-op. I did a semester, I worked for this company. It's a great place to get personal references, you know, people you've worked for, but also it's really a great place for these students to look for mentors. And I, we really stress that in our program, how important it is to have a mentor, someone you can go to when you have a question about your career and say, you know, just like you asked me about my background, everybody in these companies had different backgrounds and they're willing, they, they, you know, they really get excited about sharing it and becoming mentors for, for, for college students. I actually have a couple of myself right now that from the program and it's a great experience. So that's, that's, the, that's the most common type of uh, co-op or internship. Sometimes the name is used in, uh, interchangeably. Usually co-ops mean you're getting paid. Internships usually means non-paid, but you know, there's, there's different de definitions of, uh, depending on where you're, you're, you're taking that co-op or internship. The other opportunity to work is at the end of the program. So after you complete your four years, some, some uh, colleges have uh, continue these relationships with businesses and they offer students the opportunity to work as a paid employee under their F-1 visa up to one year. That's called OPT, or Optional Practical Training. And that's eligible to just about any student who has an F-1 visa. So those are the two opportunities students have to work. Internship and then after, during the program and then after the four years, they can actually work up to one year in the United States with their F-1 visa. Yeah, it, it's, you know, in terms of looking for careers and jobs and that, and, you know, if you go to any any job now and just, you know, look at the experience that's, that's asking for it is work experience. And a lot of times graduates or university undergraduates will look at them and be like, but I've got no experience. I've been studying for four years or five years or however long it is. Um, so that co-op really helps that. It gives you that resource and, and that tool to, to differentiate yourself from others applying for those jobs. I, mean, I, don't want, I don't want students to stress out, but it is, is you're, you're in competition with other students from the same background. How do you differentiate, differentiate yourself? Of course, through things like joining clubs and organizations while you're studying, but also internships make a big difference. You know, could make the difference between two different candidates, someone who has work experience and someone who doesn't. At, at Curry College, um, just to go back to, to um, Boston there, um, what, what type of activities are around on campus? Um, what could students expect from a daily life um, outside of the academic side of things? So during the, the first year program, students aren't allowed to join the, the official NCAA sports, which is like their actual teams, but they're allowed to practice with those teams. So they have soccer, they have football, they have baseball, they have lacrosse, uh, but also they have what's called intramural sports, which is kind of like arranged on the campus where teams are made from different students and students can just go and play and have a great time. So, and then there's also clubs. So if the student say is interested in, in golf, there is a golf club where they can go with fellow students and they can play golf. Um, if the student decides to stay at Curry College for year two, then they can join the official NCAA, which is kind of the, the official accrediting body for, for college sports. Fantastic. Um, a little bit about um, the city. You mentioned I've just gone blank now with the name of the city where Curry is. Um, so it's in Milton, Mass. So it's right next to Boston. Now, Milton, if you do a little research, it was just recently voted one of the safest cities. It's in the top 20. I think it's number 11 in the whole country. It's a beautiful, I can't even explain it. It's a really beautiful place. And Curry College, the campus is, is flat, lots of green spaces, flowers everywhere. It's really a nice, comfortable place to study. And it's only eight miles from the center of Boston. So if on the weekends students want to go into the city, they want to, you know, enjoy the theater, they want to go to clubs, they want to visit the parks, see other schools, it's very accessible. It's only about a, uh, less than an hour to get into the center of Boston. 
That's fantastic. And, and um, I've, I've enjoyed listening to all of this. And um, if anybody has any more questions, please put them through in the Q&A section, even on the chat box area, and um, we will get to it. Jennifer, I know that me and Brian have been talking here um, the whole time here. So if you, if you have um, any tips or advice for anybody, I know they'll appreciate it. I know they will speak to you at some point. Um, The advice that I would give everyone is just to be sure that um, if you're interested, keep in mind that we have two intakes. Um, and I know Brian touched on this earlier, September and January. So um, if you're planning to join us in September, you will need to move very quickly. I think we have about four weeks left, right, exactly. Brian? Yep. Um, for students to meet the conditions of their offer. Uh, but if you miss that, we also have a January intake. However, I would also uh, recommend that you move quite quickly if you'd like to join us in January, because you'll be surprised at how quickly time passes. Um, it's much better to have your offer, meet, your, meet the conditions of your offer and apply for your visa in plenty of time rather than leaving everything to the last minute. Um, that tends to cause a lot of stress to students. So just plan ahead. Um, if you're interested in this September, I would recommend speaking to the team at Global Education tomorrow <laughs> and starting your journey straight away. Um, and I think, yeah, that, that, that would be the biggest bit of advice I could give anyone right now. Yeah, and I'm gonna add to that as well, especially with the pandemic and with COVID and being able to fly and you, know, you have to get tested and, and have all the different vaccines, the different level of um, you know, testing on arrival and quarantine and that um, in the US, is there any quarantine stipulations for students coming from South Africa at the moment? No, uh, right now, the only thing that students will, will have to apply with, comply with right now in order to come to the U.S., of course, is testing before they get on the airplane. Um, and often they'll they have to be tested once they arrive to their destination. Um, as I mentioned, in order to actually come on the campus, students have to have vaccination. So if students do, cannot get a, a WHO approved vaccine, uh, before they arrive to the U.S., I'd recommend they come two weeks early, find uh, if they go to like a hotel or other accommodations for two weeks, um, get vaccinated, you know, within 24 hours upon arriving, which would be fairly easy to do, wait the two weeks and then join the program and then they're good to go. They don't have to wear masks or anything there. It's just business as usual on the campus. It's fantastic to see some normal life happening. And I know from a lot of us in Southern Africa and even me here in Perth, um, we're all itching to get back to some normality. So I think for anybody that does apply, enjoy it and enjoy the experience. Um, I don't think there's any more questions here. Um, I've really enjoyed this conversation, Brian and, and Jennifer. Um, yeah, I always, I know I, I do it a lot, but I still get excited. This morning I had a great uh, call with India Later on this evening, I'll be talking to China, and but it never gets old because it's it's really exciting stuff, and I really enjoy what I do. Yeah, it's that chance to see people improve their own lives and, and you know see these endeavors and opportunities come through. It's an incredible experience, and that's really why we love doing it at Global Education. It's the student success stories that really makes the difference. Agreed. Um, Brian, do you mind showing that video for um, a couple of people? I just thought sure. we've got. Yeah, for anyone. I'll be happy to go quickly. And then we can sort of end this webinar and um, say some thank yous. Be my pleasure. So Brian played this video for us while we were in the waiting room, waiting for everybody to sign in. And um, we just thought it was just brilliantly well done and show a bit of insight into his presentation as well and a little bit more on the campus as well. Can you hear volume on that? Yeah, perfect. It's a very green area, very outdoor sort of focused area. In current college, for students who are interested in doing like a pre-med, they have a great biology and a great biochemistry program on the campus. So those classes are available as well if students did want to stay at current college.
It's great to see the opportunity to be able to apply to a public research or an Ivy League university all through a pathway. It's brilliant. It is amazing, you know, and, and two universities just mentioned there, both uh, Boston College and Northeastern. Uh, and our last uh, cohort of students, we had students accepted both of those universities. And one other thing I could show quickly, if I can bring it up here, is let's see if I can show you. I'm stuck behind here, actually. I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. Okay, and I'm going to share my screen quickly just to show you what a typical kind of cold brain offer letter looks like. You can see this is Elon University. We'll have the on-campus uh, logo on the top. We'll have Elon University. And I'll say, congratulations, you've been conditionally offered to Elon. And this is available to students as soon as they pay, as soon as they uh, sign up uh, and uh, pay the, the deposit. We can send this out as their offer letter with the terms of exactly how they can end up as a student at Elon. And it's the same for all of our partners as well. So I just wanted to throw that in there. And that's it. Thank you, both of you. Really appreciate the time. And um, I found it valuable. I've gotten some messages from the team here as well. They've all said their thank yous as well. And um, to everybody that's listening in, please continue to follow Global Education Online. I will provide all the contact details. Um, and please go online and look up on Campus Boston and look at CEG online and have and have a browse and just, just get lost in some information. It's, it's a great time. And, as Jennifer said, it's time's ticking and we need to get you there in September. Thank you very much, George. Thanks, Jennifer. Thanks, George. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Else, everybody who attended, really a pleasure. Thank a, you. Have a good, night. good evening. Bye.